it's nighttime and the infection is advancing by the minute and getting the vaccine is humanity's only hope. This is Cards of the Dead. There are countless hordes of zombies filling the streets and shops around you. Their plan? To take you out for lunch and they're not picking up the bill. The smell of blood is overwhelming. Everywhere you look, people are panicking. People are dying. It's complete and utter chaos. Imagine Walmart on Black Friday, levels of chaos. And your goal in all of this? Get to the biological complex and retrieve a sample. And you know, hold on to your brains if you can. As you attempt to get to the biological complex, you will need to traverse various locations, search for weapons and supplies, all while trying to avoid the ravenous zombie hordes. So, that's the setting and main objective for Cards of the Dead. What is the gameplay like? Well, let's talk about that. It follows the template of a zombie survival game pretty closely. You know, the usual. Avoid zombies when possible, search locations for items and weapons, fight when needed, but for God's sake, avoid setting off car alarms. All of that's fairly standard, but what makes this game unique is not the setting, it's the actual gameplay. And as the name might suggest, gameplay is done using cards. When you enter a location, cards will be dealt face down on the playfield. You will need to find the location's exit by flipping cards over to move on to the next location, ever working towards finding the biological complex. You can flip any card you choose, but the catch is you do need to choose wisely as there could be a zombie hiding under the card. If you're lucky though, it will be an item, weapon, or even the exit. You can sometimes also find other locations to search as a card. These locations are optional and they usually have some good items or weapons that would be a good idea to pick up. But be careful, because they're also very regularly full of brain maps. So watch yourself and choose wisely. Sometimes it's a good idea if you're well armed and you have help to check out a location and find out the items. Sometimes it can be a death sentence. Every time you flip a card or do an attack, it counts as a move. You do not have a set amount of moves you can do per se but you are limited by the game. You have two stats you need to manage, health and vaccine level. When you start, you have 10 of each. Health is rather basic. When you get attacked, you lose health based on the attack power of the zombie. And you can consume food to regain health. Food is a found item and it can be held onto for later or eaten right away. You'll gain health based on the amount of food or the number that's attached to it, which can be anywhere from 1 to 10. As for your vaccine level, every move or attack you do will lower it by 1. And when your vaccine level reaches 0, you'll start to take 1 damage for every move you make until you've restored your vaccine level above 0 by injecting some vaccine. Thankfully, the world you live in is filled to the brim with vaccine. You'll find these things everywhere. In the streets, markets, on the walls, in your pockets, inside Kinder Eggs, even as a prize in your cereal. If you can think of a location, there's probably a syringe of vaccine sticking out of it. The hard part is not finding the vaccine. That's simple. It's everywhere, as I said. The hard part can be summed up with two words, item management. Because you can only hold four items, with the additional space of your backpack being able to hold three, you will very quickly run out of room as you continue your search, forcing you to decide, should I take the bat or the vaccine? Do I keep the can of beans or do I swap it for the grenade? Speaking of weapons. They have an attack power, as well as durability, which you'll see as a number on the card. So often, you're going to need to do some math. 
Okay, so I can use this weapon to kill the zombie, then it'll break. I'll be able to pick up the bat that has one attack, one durability, use it to kill the disturbing baby zombie that has one health. Then by doing that, I'll have enough room for that can of spam I've been eyeing for the last hour and a half. I spent a large amount of energy planning out my moves like this to make sure that I was getting the best value out of what I had, making sure I was able to pick up all the items and weapons that I could. But no matter how well I planned, there's going to be stuff that I have to leave behind due to lack of space. Here's where a warning comes in about this game. If you don't like item management and planning ahead, this game may not be for you. Just a heads up, because that's a huge part of the gameplay. As for combat, it's pretty basic in the game. Every time you attack, it's one turn. When you attack, the zombies have a chance to attack you. Each zombie has a different amount of turns it takes to attack you, so some zombies will be one, other ones will be two or three or more. Basically, if it's one, well, every time you do a turn, you're getting attacked. If it's more than that, well, you can have a move or two before you get attacked. There's also abilities that can be triggered much in the same way when you do a turn. Once that timer gets down to zero, once you've done that many turns, the, the ability will trigger. Things like a zombie that explodes, or there's a pregnant zombie that gives birth to a creepy demon zombie baby. Watch out for that. It's terrifying, I have to say. I don't like it. it creeps me out every time. Now, the other thing that you do have to worry about, aside from just the zombies, they can be, you know, murdering your face and eating your face off and all that good stuff, are traps. There are, of course, traps. There's traps that damage you, the zombie grabs your leg and hurts you a little bit, does a couple damage. The other one is an alarm. These ones are really bad to deal with. The alarm goes off every turn after that, one zombie card will be flipped over in that location until you either leave or you destroy the alarm. Usually takes a decent amount of damage to destroy the alarm, I believe three or so. So you're, you know, if you don't have a weapon, you're in a lot of trouble. And if you don't know where the exit is or you're poorly armed, you don't have a weapon, you're in serious trouble. I have died this way multiple times. At the end of the day, the game is very simple, but you can put a large amount of thought into it. I know I have, and I've enjoyed it. I'm still working on the first guy. His name is Rick. There's actually three characters you can play as, and I assume when you finish the Rick campaign, the other ones will unlock. That being said, this has been Cards of the Dead. Thank you for watching, and if you like this video, think about maybe checking out another one. I also stream on Twitch, if you're interested in that kind of thing, at Peanut Butter Bucket, and a follow is always appreciated. If you do try Cards of the Dead, or you've already tried it, let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks, and until next time, bye.